Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation, who comforts us in all our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. The Apostle Paul writes, when we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life, we glorify you. We glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. We praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope, we worship you. We worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I invite you to rise as you are able and uh, turn to hymn number 838 in the cranberry uh, red and shout the loaves of worship and and uh, join in singing the beautiful Savior. <laughs> to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. 
Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may live in confidence and hope until, by your call, we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Hello, my and Barb and Uncle Tim have mild but still contagious COVID, so they will not be able to attend today. They elected to move on and proceed with the funeral as scheduled, so I'm going to read some words that my Aunt Barb would have shared about Grandpa Gunner had she been here. My name is Barb Hurley, and I'm Gunner's eldest daughter. To begin, I'd like to thank all of the people who showed my dad so much kindness and brought so much joy into his life, especially during the last years or so as his health declined. If not for the generosity of so many neighbors and friends, Dad would have been unable to stay in his own home for as long as he did. Maintaining his independence and remaining in the home he loved was incredibly important to my dad. Thank you to everyone who helped make that possible. For as long as I can remember, listening to music was a big part of my dad's life. He enjoyed all kinds of music, from movie soundtracks, like The Sound of Music, to Broadway musicals, such as The Music Man. He loved Anne Murray, Harry Como, John Denver, Lana Horne, and Ella Fitzgerald. One of his all-time favorite singers was Nat King Cole. And as Nat King Cole might say, Gunnar Axel Nyholm was unforgettable, unforgettable in every way. G-Man, as Tim and I like to call him, was a four-sport letter winner in a proud Blair Bear class of 1951. He was a lifelong Husker fan who loved Memorial Stadium on Saturday afternoons. And although he never lost hope that this would be the year his team turned it all around and returned to its glory days, being a pragmatist, he hedged his bets becoming an avid Huskers volleyball fan several years ago. <laughs> no matter what his job title, education was a constant in Dad's career. Working as a teacher, a coach, a school superintendent, and later servicing employee benefit plans for school districts throughout the state. After retiring, he even taught Sunday school classes for a while. At the beginning of March, I was spending a few days with Dad. One evening, I answered the phone, and the caller told me he was a former student of Dad's from Germany during the 1960s. The caller said they'd stayed in touch for all these years. That's something, really something, as the saying goes. To teach is to touch a life forever. It's impossible to say how many dad lives my dad touched. Gunnar had a competitive streak and loved all kinds of games. Bridge, whist, cribbage, scrabble, and backgammon. So many wonderful memories and conversations sitting around his dining room table playing games. And for as long as I can remember, he sat down at the table to do the daily crossword puzzle, something he always did in pen. He even got in on the current wordle craze, although he always referred to it as wordy. My dad was generous with his time and energy. When his older brother Paul developed Alzheimer's and moved back to Omaha from Arizona a few years ago, my father became his sole caregiver, moving him into an assisted living facility, accompanying him to all of his medical appointments and running errands for him. Dad did all this without complaint, despite the fact that his own health had started to decline. Gunnar was always learning new things. At different times in his life, Gunnar loved hunting and fishing. He was a golfer, a boater, and an RV enthusiast. When health issues made these activities difficult, my dad found other passions. He was a talented photographer. He spent hours watching hummingbirds at his feeders. One year, he decided that he wanted to read the novels I was teaching my 11th grade English class. He even wrote an essay for me on The Catcher in the Rye. He earned a B plus. <laughs> he loved to make Swedish pancakes. Although being a proud Dane, he discouraged us from calling them that. Call them what you want, they were delicious. G-Man did okay in the kitchen, but he liked it best when someone else played chef. Dad loved Tammy's carrots, Tim's sons, Siobhan's pot roast, Kathy's chili, Karen's spaghetti sauce, and my meatloaf. 
and KFC coleslaw. A legendary love of KFC coleslaw. I'll never pass by KFC without thinking of dad and smiling. My dad was a storyteller. If you were lucky, you may even have heard some of his stories more than once. My dad was an advice giver, sometimes solicited, sometimes not. But it was usually pretty darn good advice. Seven years ago, I was fairly miserable at my high school teaching job. I told him all about the problems at that school, but I thought I was too old to look for a job in the other school district. It took him about two seconds to respond. The way I see it, you're too old to put up with all that. I started a new job that fall. Thanks, Dad. Gunner loved to play tricks on people. They're, these are two of my favorites. When the four of us were little, Dad and his longtime friend and partner in crime, Marvin Nelson, built a deck onto our home in Utah. Part of the building process involved digging. One afternoon, Dad came rushing into the house, holding out what he told us was gold that he dug up. <laughs> oh, the excitement we all felt as we imagined our new lives as millionaires. <laughs> Soon after, he confessed that he covered some ordinary rocks with metallic gold paint. Oh, the sadness we felt as we realized we were not going to be millionaires after all. Another one of his pranks happened just a few years ago, when my sister Karen and I spent spring break on Sanibel Island, Florida. Dad mailed me a generous check with specific instructions to use the money to take Karen out to a nice dinner, but not to tell Karen about it, though. So Karen and I went to dinner. I suggested we have a drink at the bar. She stopped me. Well, I really ought to be the one to get those drinks. Turns out, Dad had sent Karen a check <laughs> to take me out to dinner and instructed her to keep it a secret. Well done, Dad. Dad was all of these things. But more than anything else, my dad was a man of faith. Steadfast faith, unwavering faith a true believer in Jesus Christ as his personal savior, a man who looked forward to his eternal life in heaven. And even though I know that's where he is, I miss him dearly. But as Nat King Cole advised, smile though your heart is aching, smile even though it's breaking. If you smile through your fear and sorrow, smile and maybe tomorrow you will see the sun come shining through for you. As dad told me recently, Soon I'll be in a place where there's no more pain, only peace and joy for all eternity. All eternity. My heart is aching, but I smile thinking of him reunited with his many friends who have gone on before. With his parents, Paul and Ingrid Nyholm, with his little sister Ellen and his older brother Paul. And I smile knowing he is once again with his beloved son Paul Joseph, who left us much, much too soon. Thank you all for being with us this moment to celebrate Gunnar Axel Nyholm, a man who is truly unforgettable in every way. Well, good morning. I'm Deacon Rick Strong, and I had the privilege of visiting Gunnar many, many times over the last few years. Um, so Barb communicated with me and asked me to speak about his faith life, and I'm going to talk a little bit about some other things too. <clears throat> so, and I got to visit with Gunnar, like I said, many times because of my position here at First Lutheran, and we became good friends. He had some regrets in life, but when his second surgery for his heart didn't work, he didn't come back and say, well, why me? He said that he just would have to live with it. Well, as many of you know, and as we heard um, from Barb, he was an avid reader. And he has read the entire Bible several times in just the short time that I've known. And when I would visit with him, we would talk about those things. But he read with a purpose. And that purpose was to open himself to be present with God in his life. 
Well, we had some great conversations, discussions, and talks about scripture from this book of the Bible or from another. The last time I visited Gunnar was when he was in the hospice house. And we had another one of those of conversations. When I came into the room and we chatted for a bit, he turned to me and he said, Rick, do you have some time? I told him that we had time to chat. And he told me that he was reading from the book of Judges. And he was wondering about what he had read there. Well, we talked about it for a while. And we didn't come up with any particular simple understanding of that scripture. But then he said to me, well, maybe we're not ready to understand that scripture right now. And he says, remember what God told us in, in scripture? My thoughts are not your thoughts, nor my ways your ways, said the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. He was quoting from Isaiah 55. Well, what Gunnar was doing, um, Henry Nowen says, is spiritual reading. Nowen is a 20th century theologian who has written about the spiritual life of Christians. And to quote Henry now, and he's in his book called Discernment, he says, God speaks to us all the time in many ways, but it requires spiritual discernment to hear God's voice and see what God sees and read the signs in daily life. Well, now and go on goes on to say that spiritual reading is not just simply reading. It requires a willingness not just to read, but to apply what you read to your spiritual life and to let it read you. And not just to master it so that you have knowledge about it, but to let it master you. <clears throat> and you should open your heart to God's voice and to listen to what God is saying to us through those words. And we can be present with God and hear what God is telling us that he wants us to be. Well, Gunnar enjoyed doing and joining Bible studies here at First Lutheran. And whether it was the nine Bible books for nine months, or the story series, or the belief series, or the return of the prodigal son by Henry Nowen, you can count on Gunner to ask thought-provoking questions. Well, Gunner has many friends here at First Lutheran, but I just know of a few, so I was going to talk about those that I knew. He would play cribbage with John and Shirley and he would, he would go to their home to play cribbage, or they would come to his. John and Gunnar usually were the ones that played cribbage, and Shirley just joined in the conversation. Well, another friend that Gunnar visited regularly was Dwayne. Dwayne, like Gunnar, has had health issues over the last 18 months to two years. And Gunnar made time to either call him or Dwayne called Gunner, and they would just visit, or sometimes they visited in person. <clears throat> well, Gunner had um, liked to make friends, and so he even made some new friends. When the COVID-19 pandemic hit in March of 2020, I called Gunner and asked him if he would volunteer, and he said yes to visit about eight people here in this congregation because COVID had shut down everything, including our worship services. And so he visited those people on a regular basis. And then he would call me or he would message me and tell me when he had visited those people and if they had any concerns. 
So he was always willing to let us know how he could share himself with others. <clears throat> and he also had some friends here, and I would like to have that um, shown on the screen. Um, his door was painted by his friend John. And for those of you who don't know what that is, that's the Danish flag. And he was very proud of his heritage. And he had friends here at First Lutheran because First Lutheran was a Danish Lutheran congregation. He had friends like Paul Larson and Pastor Norm Freund and Paul Johnson. And they called themselves jokingly the Danish Mafia. Well, he told me about those people because, um, <clears throat> because I had attended Dana College, Dana Lutheran College, which had Danish roots, even though I wasn't Danish. Well, another thing that Gunnar liked was to travel. And he um, taught overseas for several years, and he got to see some amazing sights. Well, he told me about a time when he was living in Turkey, and he, was, he had students of military families who were living there that he taught. Well, the story that I remember was when he had taken some va vacation time while living in Turkey, and he went to another Middle Eastern country to visit some friends. On the way back home, he took a side trip and toured the ancient city of Ephesus. He knew that I liked to travel too, and he was always encouraging me not to forget to take those side trips uh, those, to those out-of-the-way places while vacationing. So the things I will remember about Gunnar, my friend, is to take time to read scripture as a spiritual reading and let it be part of your spiritual life and let it help you be present with God. And the second thing, to take time to enjoy friends and make new ones and to take time to see the wonderful sights of this world and to enjoy those side trips. Because some of those side trips may be the highlight of your vacation. Well, I just want to say in closing, God bless the memory of Gunnar Nyholm.
Thank you, Nathan. Let us read responsibly Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. A reading from Philippians. St. Paul writes, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say, Rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And now I invite you to stand as you are able for the reading of the Gospel. <coughs> Holy Gospel according to St. John. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also and you know the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Pray, please be seated. It is a rare occasion, but every so often I attend a funeral instead of being the officiant. It's even more rare for me to join the procession to the cemetery. On one such occasion a few years ago, I had several reasons to go to a funeral and then drive to the burial. The first reason was that the service was for the sister of a member of a congregation I had just begun to serve as an interim pastor, transitional minister, and I wanted to introduce myself, be supportive of her and her family in that present moment. I also knew that I might be doing the funeral for her mother sometime during my time in her congregation, and that turned out to be the case later. And being a large family, I knew that they were dealing with death a lot. Now, to be sure, my level of grief and loss was nowhere near that of the siblings and the children of the person who had just passed. But when one joins a funeral procession, or when one attends a memorial service such as the one today, one enters into that valley of the shadow of death that others are experiencing quite profoundly the loss and the emptiness that is left by the absence of one who occupied an important part of people's lives. We cannot ignore the power of death. It separates us from our loved ones. It disrupts significant relationships. Those who are left behind experience grief and loss and sometimes periods of deep loneliness. Death can get in the way of whatever it is we're trying to do to care for our neighbors and friends. It's a powerful thing, and it's all too real. But the good news is that death does not have the last word. It does not have the final say. We come together in worship today because we realize that death, with all its power, can be and has been overcome. God has overcome sin and death through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. We know that message. We celebrate that message. And we celebrate God's dealing with death through Jesus' resurrection as we remember the life of one of God's children 
and God's servants, Gunnar, Axel, Nihon. We heard three passages from Scripture this morning, Psalm 23, John 14, and Philippians 4. All three are passages that convey a message of assurance and hope. Psalm 23 is realistic. It is realistic about death and the other struggles that we face in life as well. But at the same time, it strikes a very hopeful tone. Even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we fear no evil, for God is with us. Even in the midst of the sometimes harsh realities of life and death, we have the promise that God is with us each and every step of the way. We are not alone, a contemporary creed tells us. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. In our Gospel reading from John, we have a message of unabashed promise and hope. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. Another way Jesus was saying, there is room. There is room for those who do not let their hearts be troubled, or maybe for even whose hearts are sorely troubled. There is room for those who put their faith and trust in Christ, and Gunner knew there was room for him. Gunner's father, Pastor Paul C. Nyholm, reminded Gunner of this promise in a letter to Gunner just before the pastor's death in April of 1977. Gunner's father wrote, I'm looking forward to meeting you in heaven where I know we have, shall have much to talk about and be grateful for. When you can see your mother, Infrid, and so many others who have gone before us. I know that when we meet in heaven, we shall see things in a new light and thank God in endless eternity that he, in spite of all, turned our mistakes to blessings and now has shown us his marvelous grace and love. And Gunner wrote about this hope himself. He had the practice of sending cards to people, and I'm sorry I didn't take the trouble to get this on the screen this morning. This is a card of a painting of Jesus with his disciples on the road to Emmaus, another journey. And in commenting on this card, he wrote of the destination available to us through God's mercy and our belief in Jesus Christ. And then he would write in this card these words of encouragement. One, hold fast to the commitment you have with God. This is especially true in this time of greater uncertainty as to what the future might bring. Please put this card where you will see it often, giving thanks to God for the road you travel. And then two, earnestly pray for opportunities Pray to find opportunities to share in the great Easter message with other persons. Best wishes for the peace and security found in the promises of the Savior. It is a natural and good thing to cherish the memories of those we love. It is also natural to ask, what now? What now will happen that this chapter in Gunner's life and ours has ended. What will life look like going forward? What will the future bring? The truth is that we don't know the answers to all those questions, only the passage of time will answer all those questions. Paul was probably asking what now or what next when he was writing to his Christian friends in Philippi, that second lesson we read this morning. All we know for sure is that he was writing to them from prison, although it's not clear from which of the several imprisonments Paul experienced, he was in jail a lot. He is awaiting trial and is uncertain as to how it's all going to come out. Yet in those uncertain circumstances, Paul was able to write about joy, and he was able to write about peace. He assures the Philippians that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. There's a comforting image here. 
It's an image of peace that stands guard, much the way a sentry stands a post. What does a sentry do? A sentry watches out for trouble. So God promises us a peace that watches out for us in a time of trouble or a time of need. A peace that guards our hearts and minds even in times of uncertainty. May we know something of God's peace today as we remember how Gunner's life affected our life. May we know something of God's peace as we anticipate how our lives are going to change as a result of Gunner's passing. May we know something of God's peace as we face the days ahead with a holy and certain hope. And may we remember that Gunner continues to live under God's unconditional love and care, the same love and care that sustained him in this life. And to echo what Rick said earlier, blessed be the memory of Gunner Axel Nyholm.
stand as you are able. With the whole church, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, in holy baptism, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion of saints in the body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace, God of mercy. Amen. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to share the new life in Christ, God of mercy. Amen. Give courage and faith to all who mourn and assure a certain hope in your loving care, that casting all their sorrow on you, they may have strength for the days ahead. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith, that where this world groans in grief and pain, your Holy Spirit may lead us to bear witness to your light and life. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Help us in the midst of things we cannot understand to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. God of mercy. God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us commend Gunner to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Gunnar Axel Nyman. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen.
first to the kitchen windows uh, for their food, followed by the rest of us who are remaining for the meal. If you are not staying for the luncheon, just feel free to get up and, and leave through any exit. And I'm going to offer a table prayer at this time so you can simply proceed to your meal um, at when we're done here. Let us pray. Every good and perfect gift comes from you, O God. Bless the food which we are about to enjoy, and help us to receive it with thankful hearts. By your Spirit, nourish our love for one another, and for our neighbor in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let us go forth in peace in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.